All right, I'm making this bulldozer, and I've had some oh, most excellent developments. All right, first, quick review of my bulldozer design. This is a little model of the weird transmission where one motor turns this gear, and that makes it go forward and backwards. And then this is going to be manual turn that does the steering. And you can steer on the spot by just turning it, or you can be driving and steering at the same time. Now there were a couple questions about this. Yes, it's going to be four-wheel drive. This is just a, I don't know, proof of concept. And uh, one concern was that if I'm driving and this wheel gets caught by something, then the other wheel will keep turning and it'll force energy into the steering wheel. But the steering wheel is going to be geared down like 40 times, so I'll be able to stop that with uh, my finger very easily. Hey, I think. Of course, I've never actually seen a machine that works this way, so uh, if there's any problems, I'll make whatever necessary judgments, adjustments, adjustments I need to make. Right. My most excellent development, I got my hands on all this aluminum aluminum, and I've got a big fat I-beam that's going to be the main pieces of the frame. It's 16 feet long. And then I have a full sheet of 4x8, 8 inch aluminum, aluminum here, and then a bunch of other scrap pieces and stuff. I have a few meter long, 4-inch uh, by 4-inch, so like 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter, 8 inch wall square tube, uh, and a bunch of stuff like that. So I, I think I can make the whole thing out of aluminum, aluminum. I'm just going to call it minimum, minimum. All right, so here what I, here's what I roll. Really all right, so here's what I've got so far. These things here are the I-beams, and I'll probably have smaller chunks of I-beams going across that I just haven't drawn in yet. Two main inputs are uh, the motor here and then the fancy steering wheel. I don't have the steering wheel, and I'm just going to have to make that. But all this guts here, sprockets and chains and stuff, I've ordered that stuff. And then, you know, I found a bunch of minimum stuff. And then these four things are batteries. And they're the same batteries I have on the boat right now. And I just drew these blocks to account for the size of them plus a little bit of height. So I should be able to sit up on top of them and put my feet down on these. And that should be totally comfortable. And then I'll have the eighth inch sheet coming up the side here over and down the other side. And that'll just that'll go from the back all the way to the front, and then it'll leave some space up in here for the electronics and junk. And I ordered some uh, some ATV uh, wheels that are kind of a standard, easy to find size. I just erased a bunch of the other stuff to show something I'm not totally sure I'm, I'm going to be able to get away with. Let's zoom in a little bit. All right, this is the main steering uh, sprocket axle whatever and then it's got some sprockets now from this sprocket to this gear and this sprocket to this gear it's just got like normal chain going around in a circle here you can kind of see like it comes around here goes around there comes around that one's fine right now on the other side this has to turn these in the opposite direction of that so what I have here is a funny situation where I've got the chain crisscrossing coming down and then going back up and then crisscrossing again and up and down and that means the chain is gonna have to deflect like I don't know like a centimeter or or so over a 50 centimeter distance now I'm hoping that's a small enough angle that it'll be able to do that without any you know any disasters one other thing is here I'm going to have to keep this chain from slipping because it's not like this where it's wrapped all the way around. That's not going to slip at all. But here, you know, it could. So I might need to put something through the, between the chains here that rolls with them that spreads that apart, which pulls that together. Or I might have to put another roller holding the chain against there. Now the good thing is it'll have to slip on this side and on the other side because uh, they both push the same thing. This is the main driving axle. Well, I don't know what to call this thing. The thing, the axle that's delivering the driving force to both things. So off the sprocket here, there's a chain going to the 
back or the front, I don't know. But then off the other sprocket here, it's got a thing going to the other end. So it's it's driving all four wheels. And the same with the steering. It's, you know, steering all four wheels, too. All right, let me just put all that stuff back. And then up on top of here, there's going to be one or two solar panels. Just I mean, I'll just make a really simple thing up there. And with the, the scooper bucket that's going to stick out the front, I'm thinking of having it when it comes down, it just rests against the front of these so that, you know, if it's pushing hard forward, it won't have all the pressure just on the joints. It'll just have like this, the pressure coming from the wheels through this I-beam pressing right on it. And then I'm thinking the arms that come back from the, the lifter part will just kind of fit right inside the I-beam. They're like right in, right in here and just slide in there. So there'll be a pusher scoop thing up here. And the way I'm thinking of making it raise and lower is to have like a frame that comes up and have a chain hoist up here. And the chain hoist will be connected. You know, the kind of chain hoist where you just pull with your hands. So you can sit here. If you want this to come up a bit, you just give it a yank and it raises. And if you want it to go back down, you just give the other end a yank and it goes back down. And then I don't have to worry about anything motorized. And it gives the driver something to do too. And of course, I'll have to have sheet coming down here and across and then back up to cover all the, the guts from down there from uh, getting mud and gunk in them. And I might make little containers to go under all the sprockets and then I can put a little bit of oil in them so they'll be sitting in little oil baths. Like I just have a, a watertight tray in the bottom basically and all this stuff can just sit in the oil. But everything that's going to be exposed will be stainless. Like these are stainless shafts coming through here, stainless ball bearings. This is minimum. The only steel stuff that could rust is all on the inside part. Oh, this part here is a gearbox with a worm gear drive. And that should help prevent any... Oh, come on. That should help prevent any feedback coming through to the steering wheel because the, the way a worm gear drive works, um, they kind of have a lot of friction, which doesn't matter in one direction because they gear down so much. I think this is a 10 to 1. But that friction prevents force from getting back through and turning it the opposite direction. So there is one thing I haven't really worked out yet. So this is a ball bearing up here. It's actually two ball bearings, and there's ones there, there, there. There's a ball, there's a whole bunch of ball bearings, and right now they're just kind of sitting there, not attached by anything. Right down here too, so because I don't have anything to attach them yet. Oh, and this is actually going to go right through the I beam. I'm going to drill a hole through it, just so the the force. This is going to have a lot of uh, torque on it this way. And I want to make sure it's just really steady. So it's just going to go right through the middle of the I-beam. Because the I-beam is not going to bend. But anyway, I need to make blocks for the bearings. So basically something that the bearings fit inside. And then can bolt onto the surface of wherever it's going. You know, something kind of like this. Where the ball bearing can fit on the inside. And then this can get bolted onto something. And, I mean, not just like this. I just drew this really fast. But, uh... I have a couple options available to me at the moment. One would be to just make these out of fiberglass, because I do have fiberglass stuff, which I'm, I don't want to do. Oh, I'd so much rather not make them with fiberglass, because that stuff is toxic and sticky, and oh, it's just gross to work with. But that is an option. Something else I could try is getting a whole bunch of cans, like minimum cans, by making a little furnace, melting them, and pouring them into a mold, casting my own bearing blocks. And then I have to do a little bit of machining to get the holes right so the bearings could fit in, but I should be able to figure that much out. And I can make the molds for them out of clay from the island. I think that would work just fine. I should get my parts in about two weeks, maybe a little more.
Oh, here are those other pieces I was talking about. Oh, those are nice. It's funny, I'm kind of skeptical about how much it's going to be able to push. But that's okay, because even if it's just good for loading stuff up, loading stuff on it and then driving it around, that'll be super helpful. And it'll be a mobile little power station, because it'll have, it'll be electric. So it'll have its own batteries, solar panels on the roof. Uh, I can put an inverter in there and then have, a, have plugs wherever I'm going. Plus, reality's not going to care about my skepticism. It's going to be able to push whatever it pushes. And I think I might also be pretty impressed. Look how happy this little guy is. Oh, he's so happy driving this bulldozer. Oh, so happy. He's not even to scale. I'm going to be way bigger compared to my bulldozer. But already, he's got full-sized happiness.